Hi, Chris Murray here. We're going to be taking a look at an application called Instant Meshes. And what Instant Meshes is, it's an application that was part of a presentation at SIGGRAPH Asia 2015 uh, that is used for basically retopologizing triangulated data or point cloud data into usable meshes. And it's a completely free application. You can find it on GitHub. I'll provide the link for it in the video below. But um, you can download it here and it gives you some additional information. You can actually read the paper that it was submitted uh, as it was submitted and just give some more usage information. We're also, I should mention, using um, a free uh, 3D scan um, from the folks at 3D Scans. This is Mercury. There's a bunch of stuff that you can get from these folks that are completely free and usable. I'll go ahead and include the link in that as well, but I want to thank them for that. So here is Mercury in our application here. Um, we've loaded it up. This is uh, pretty much the, the straight up uh, triangulated mesh that we got. We're going to retopologize it into quads using instant meshes. If we go ahead and open up the advanced tab, I've already opened up the mesh um, and you can see that uh, we can actually see the wireframe. So this is the data that we're working with and this is completely unusable depending on what we might want to use it for. Maybe we want to do some cool animated um, VFX to this thing or we just want cleaner topology. Either way, it doesn't really matter. It's just a good example of how we're going to use this to retopologize this data. So there's a lot of other things here that we can um, uh, turn on and off here, but for right now, we're just going to look at the workflow. So the workflow basically goes like this. First thing we're going to do is create an orientation field, which gives us an indication of the direction of the mesh topology and, and kind of a look and feel of what it looks like. And then we're going to actually uh, detail some settings on um, positioning of the edges and the geometry. So it's a little bit more specific. Um, you want to leave this uh, extrinsic um, checkbox on because this uh, is essentially an algorithm that the authors of this application have uh, implemented that control, that give specific control or identification of hard edges or creases or, or things like that. So um, we definitely want to keep that on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and solve for the orientation field. And you can see we get basically these brush strokes and this tells us right off the bat, gives us an indication of how the uh, mesh is going to be turned into quads. And so we can get a good indication of what that is going to look like. In fact, if I just hit position field solve, we can, again, it, it paints on the mesh. We haven't actually extracted the mesh yet, but we can, we can see basically what it's going to look like. Now, this is an interactive process. You can go back and forth between these two, um, these two, uh, processes you know as you need to so for example if I just want to go back and, and resolve the orientation field I can do that and then I can start doing some interesting things up here so for example if I want to have a little bit more control over how the edge loops or the flow of the topology goes around the face right now it's pretty much going um, in a straight grid. If I take a look at that again, I can see it's it's cutting across that, but I really would probably want to be a little bit more specific in how that geometry moved around. So I'll resolve for the orientation field. Um, I should mention, by the way, I can control the vertex count. So the higher the vertex count, the more quads you're going to get, and I'll show you some of that in 3ds Max, but you should also be forewarned that the, the higher you go, the more calculation time it's going to take to um, turn the mesh into quads. And so you want to just be wary of this. You may think that the program or the application has locked or hung, but it hasn't. Uh, the one I did, which I'll show you in 3ds Max, took almost uh, an hour to uh, create all the quads necessary to extract the mesh. So um, you just want to be wary of this number, and you are talking about vertex counts. You're not necessarily talking about polygons there. So anyways, back to the orientation field. I can go ahead and turn on this brush and I can uh, just decide, you know, in a, almost a paintbrush fashion where I want straight edges. And you can see that it automatically starts to update that or where I want curved edges. And this is not specific edge placement. These are just basically guides. Uh, these are guides that are going to be considered um, 
in, in the edge creation process. So I can just add some curvature here, um, the places where I would want loops to actually be. Um, the interactivity of the program requires you to actually leave the tool to move things around, but that's okay. Uh, really doesn't bother me that much. Just need to be aware of that. Then you can go back into the tool and all your brush strokes are still there. So I'm just going to go ahead and create some flow lines around which I want to make sure that the geometry flows. So I'll create some more around here. Create some there. I'll get out of the tool and rotate around a little bit and make sure we have some good flow along the jaw. Okay. There, that's good there. And then if we want to adjust any other, you know, edge flow maybe along more of the musculature there, you can see that once it resolves, it will give us geometry. So, you know, obviously the more uh, orientation work you do, the better results you're going to get. But I'll just go ahead and leave this for now. All right. And then we'll just do a quick position field solve and see what we get. And you can see that, again, this is not specific mesh placement. Um, I have some weird things going on there. So maybe we'll go ahead and go back into this field. We'll resolve for that. And we'll just make sure that we have some good edge flow there and edge flow there. And I think what's probably screwing that up is these two chin flows there. But this, is, this looks good for now. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at our solve. So we're getting some decent uh, flow here. And now with the position field, we can actually dictate to a certain degree where we want some specific edges. So you can see up here in the eyelids, I'm not actually getting any, let's uh, scroll down there and move around. Um, this is not necessarily indicative of all of the edge loops, but it's, it's certainly indicative of some of them. And I, I do wanna make sure that I get some edges perhaps right on the eyelids. So I can turn on um, the paintbrush here, and these will let me specifically place edges directly onto the mesh. So wherever I have really important um, geometry features that I want to highlight, that's where I can put them. So I'll go ahead and swing over here. And we'll do here, I'm just kind of eyeballing this not really spending a lot of time in precision. In fact, that one was uh, completely wrong. We're gonna go ahead and delete that one and I'll redraw a little bit more carefully this time. Okay, so now that we have got our orientation field set and our position field set, we can actually go ahead and export the mesh. So first thing we want to do is extract the mesh. And this goes through and takes into consideration all of these things that we've created. It takes into consideration our vertex count, orientation field settings, position field settings, and gives us a preview of a mesh. So let me go ahead and turn off this. And you can actually see now the decisions that we've made in edge loops and flows and things like that. Um, you can see we have looping around here. Again, it's an algorithm, so it's you know taking into consideration our brush strokes. We still may have to do some work, but we're getting a lot of the heavy lifting done in terms of the loops and orientations where we would normally want them. And this will be evident when I show you in 3ds Max the differences of all the different things that I've created. So once we have a mesh that we can work with, and we could probably spend a lot more time working on this if we wanted to, but you can you can see what it is that we're getting. I'll go ahead and um, we'll save the uh, mesh itself. So we'll save this as uh, Mercury. Okay, so now that we have saved out our OBJ file, let's go ahead and open up 3ds Max and take a look at what we've got here. So these 
are three different examples of the output from, um, or two different examples of the output from Instant Mesh. This is actually the original uh, mesh as it came from the 3D scan. So this, again, this is the same mesh that we were working with in Instant Message. It's triangulated, and that's what we were working with. This is the first result, the first default result. It has a couple of open edges and borders and some missed polygons and things like that. Nothing that doesn't seem too terribly um, horrible to fix. Uh, I could probably fix that all pretty easily. You can see, you know, with the lower resolution, we definitely lost some detail in there. This next mesh right here is the same process that I showed you earlier, but uh, I set the vertex count to 250,000K. And you can see we definitely have a lot more detail in there. It should be noted that I did not do any of the um, edge flow or you know position orientation or any of that that we were looking at in the first part. In fact, I'll go ahead and import that right now. So I'll go file import. And we'll do... Here's our first one. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so it's brought it in. It's right there in the middle. I'll go ahead and just move it out of the way. And here is the one that we just did. But you can see now this has all of the specific edge position information and the orientation field has been modified. So there you have this versus this so it actually you know it's pretty usable it gets you it gets you pretty far down the road depending on what it is that you need to do i do want to take one further example and take a look at how it works with something more um, machined or something that comes from a uh, manufacturing application like uh, inventor or solidworks okay so how does Instant Meshes handle something that comes from uh, something like Inventor? Let's go ahead and take a look. Here is a mesh that I've received right from uh, the device manufacturer as an OBJ file. It's really, you know, not very usable. I won't be animating this, so I don't technically need to have a deformable mesh, but I just generally like working with quads and um, I might want to do some texture mapping or unwrapping or maybe even go in and just delete a lot of this extra geometry and it's going to be a lot easier to do that if I know that it's all quads. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to go file export and I'm just going to export this as uh, an OBJ file. And I'll go to my recent places and we'll just call this handle OBJ. Okay, done. And now let's go back into instant message. So we'll go ahead and open the mesh and we'll do the handle. Okay, so there's that pretty quick and easy right in there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the orientation field. So you can see that is definitely looking a little wonky there for sure. So let's go ahead and just reposition this a little bit. And we'll just paint some orientation degrees on here. Let's go ahead and preview that. Not horrible. Notice we only have a pretty low vertex count as well. I'm going to go ahead and move that up. We'll go ahead and recalculate. Okay, and let's just take a look and see what we got here. Okay, a lot more meshes. That's great. So that means we're going to get a lot more detail. If uh, I turn around in here, you can see what it is that we're going to get. So we have definitely a lot more meshes in there. Let's go back to this. And you can see everything kind of turns a little bit there. So we're going to, you know, want to straighten this out through there 
Okay, and we're definitely going to want to straighten this out through there. All right, looking much better. Okay, now that I have the orientation field correct, I can begin to worry about the position field. So, you know, for example, we want to have specific edge loops in specific places with this mesh. So let's go ahead and make some decisions about that. Um, I'm probably going to want, you know, a specific uh, edge right there. see this all there let's go ahead and extract the mesh and see what we get so in this case that's pretty usable I would definitely need to clean it up a little bit more but this is definitely usable these are the pieces that I would probably get rid of since I'm doing a product animation so I don't really need that but it's also gonna make it a lot easier to get rid of all of that extra stuff so we'll go ahead and save this and there's our handle. You know, still some work to do, some cleanup, but a heck of a lot farther along than if we were just retopologizing by hand. Mm -hmm. 